I'm a Teamster. I work at UPS uh, 728 here in uh, Atlanta, a uh, member of um, TDU, although that's I'm probably going to let that lapse. Um, uh, Teamsters Mobilize, which is a, a kind of very new um, uh, rank and file group uh, that we're trying to put together of uh, radicals and, and revolutionaries, a um, uh, member of Firebrand. So, um, uh, I just thought I'd, I was talking with Jason about uh, what, what talks I could give and uh, brought up labor. And so the original idea was uh, really just to give an update of what was going on with, with the Teamsters um, because of the, um, Sean O'Brien speaking at the RNC and, and seeming to either, you know, kind of closet endorse Trump. Um, sorry, this is slipping here. Um, but then, of course, with... Uh, the, Last year's fa uh, not real failed strike, I guess you could call it, um, uh, at the Teamsters, and then uh, being overshadowed by the actual strike at the UAW, um, with with uh, Trump and Musk uh, joking about firing um, striking workers and and being brought up on uh, uh, unfair labor practice charges by the UAW. It's like, well, we'll we'll add um, the the UAW, and so. Yeah, you know, we had Sean O'Brien from the Teamsters, Sean Fain, uh, Sean, Sean, Don, and Elon. Um, of course, uh, now uh, there's also um, been some other stuff going on with with labor, um, Boeing uh, down here in the southeast. There was AT and T, and then of course, just yesterday at uh, 12:01 a.m., uh, the ILA shut down all the ports on the the East Coast and, and Gulf Coast. So, um, so the talk has expanded and become messy. Um, and, uh, you know, I, so, um, I'll try and uh, squeeze it all in. Um, you know, I, I promise I'll, I'll stop at the beginning of capitalism, um, <laughs> um, and, and try and keep it limited. Um, so, all right. Um, unions and the ruling class today, um, <laughs> in the next 25 minutes, um, I think it, it's okay to say that, or I think it's fair to say that um, uh, we've entered um, all social movements, not just labor, have entered a new phase um, since the global pandemic uh, of uh, 2020, since COVID-19. Um, and uh, not just because of the, the experience of going through that, but um, everything that, that has resulted since uh, the global supply chain issues uh, causing massive inflation, destabilization around the globe, um, and uh, those, those, uh, those effects have, have been felt and, and are continuing to be felt uh, today. Um, early on, uh, there was the, the experience of uh, nobody wants to work anymore, um, of quiet quitting, of anti-work and, and things like that. And those were all uh, kind of things going under uh, going on underneath the, the surface um, without big, really big expressions um, uh, in any kind of um, labor uh, labor action. So you can kind of think of it as, uh, this is a metaphor I resort to a lot, um, kind of the the magma underneath the volcano um, uh, with the crust, uh, but the, the crust holding uh, for the time being. Um, but then in 2021, we got some of our first uh, first strikes with John Deere and Nabisco. Um, that was followed by what was supposed to be a big strike in railroads in 2022, although that was shut down by uh, Congress and Joe Biden um, and uh and in fact the republicans as well um and uh then in 2023 um we got uh kind of out of nowhere it seemed like um uh the big the big strikes that grabbed headlines was were actually in entertainment uh not in anything uh that you that the left kind of traditionally considers industrial or or important to the working class but we had the wga strike um, uh, which was a, a very militant strike. The WGA has kind of reinvented itself as a very democratic grassroots um, and militant union, um, followed by the, the Screen Actors Guild. Um, and they had largely successful strikes um, that year. It was supposed to be uh, followed by um, uh, three, uh, not three quarters, um, a third of a million Teamsters going on strike. Uh, we had practice pickets. Um, and then all of a sudden that fizzled. Um, and people who were expecting that uh, got got nothing. Um, it was lit, billed as a, an historic, uh, uh, an 
and store a contract, but in fact, it really just undid some things that were um, uh, sold to us in the, the the sellout 2018 contract. And I can get into some of the details about about that later. So that turned into nothing. Um, uh, and a real challenge to the ruling class was was wasted. Um, but shortly after that, the Sean Fain, who comes, who came out of a, a, a grassroots group like Teamsters for a Democratic Union, um, uh, who overtook uh, and, and won just that same year um, uh, as a reform caucus in the in the UAW, uh, won the presidency and then led. Um, would seem to be a pretty militant strike um, with very little, um, uh, very little planning. Um, and in fact, there were there are lots of things to criticize about it. Um, but but given the 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 short um, uh, time period to organize and, and things like that, um, uh, pretty pretty impressive considering the the backwards uh, nature of, of the U.S. labor movement. Um, those things led to other things. Uh, we had uh, some of the first uh, transplants being unionized in, in the auto industry. Um, uh, Volkswagen workers uh, voted to join. Um, uh, yeah, and there, and there, of course, there were other smaller strikes, um, uh, uh, both successful and or contracts that came up, both successful and and things that were averted um, at the last minute. Um, uh, for the Teamsters, uh, the Amazon Labor Union, uh, which was basically one um, warehouse in in New York, um, and, and a few other activists uh, in in different um, Amazon uh, workplaces around the country, um, uh, voted to affiliate with the the Teamsters. Um, and then since then, uh, we've had uh, AT and T, uh, Boeing, and ILA uh, all, all shaking things up. And and you know you can look at these things and think, um, uh, you know, hey, uh, I mean these are all fantastic. We should be out there supporting them. Um, uh, if you if you have a picket line near you, go join it. Um, build solidarity. Join rallies. Um, uh, these are all uh, great things to to get involved with. Um, and you can look around and say, hey, labor is, seems to be waking up. Um, and, and you wouldn't be wrong for saying that. But there is a problem. And I think we have to to, to recognize that if we're going to be serious about figuring out what's going on um, uh, in the U.S. working class. The problem is that labor's um, been waking up for about 30 years. Um, if you go back to the, the 90s, um, there were uh, um, different unions, different um, strikes starting that really kind of shook the um, uh, the curse of of, uh, uh, of neoliberalism off. First, the Decatur War Zone strikes uh, centered in, in Illinois, and then, of course, UPS in 1997 really seemed to be turning points. But then things happened, right? Um, Contracts five years. Uh, nothing happens for those five or six years, um, and then things get worse and worse. And then you have a, another strike here that, that uh, makes a few gains, and then another five or six year contract, and things get worse and worse. Um, you can imagine this waking up process going on indefinitely, really, um, until World War Three or World War Four, or the ice caps melt and, and drown us all. Um, so the the question of why these these waking ups these these big breakthroughs don't seem to lead to anything else and you can go back to things like the the teachers strikes which seemed to be a real step forward and were in many cases they were illegal strikes um uh wildcats in in, in that sense um uh but but what did it lead to the current situation right so I think we have to to face the, the reality that this might continue in this way, right? That these big struggles might pop up and die back down, given the the kind of sclerotic nature of the the labor uh, bureaucracy that can't seem to see past um, anything legal. But of course, we're a Marxist, and we know that it can't continue indefinitely. Um, Things get worse and worse under capitalism. Uh, capital demands that they extract more and more. Um, 
so despite these these wake ups, um, even before COVID, uh, homelessness was becoming a major and unavoidable problem. We had the the death of despair, um, uh, alcoholism, drug overdoses, um, suicides. Uh, mass shootings, are, of course, are a symptom of the the decay of American public life, um, and uh, the the process of of extracting more and more profit means that both the the working class is being progressively more and more impoverished, um, and the middle class, uh, such as it was, is shrinking even farther and farther. Um, so. Now there was uh, uh, something of a response. Um, people remember uh, Sanders and the, the DSA, the, the explosive growth of the DSA, um, and whatever uh, our opinions of that, there was a real phenomenon. Uh, the DSA went from a, a few hundred um, uh, old timers to uh, literally tens of thousands of members, at least on paper, thousands of actual real members, um, and it was a real. Um, uh, a real phenomenon. Both Sanders and DSA, of course, proved not to be a problem for the ruling class. Uh, in fact, they were the vector by which um, people were brought back into the the, the process, um, the electoral process, the the state, and and how the the state and the capitalist class re-legitimized itself. So, um, but the the issues that led to the rise of of Sanders and DSA in the squad have not been resolved in fact they've they've just gotten worse um the problems of you know of sorry <laughs> my nose get a little sketchy here um i don't have my computer up um okay so you know individual representatives of the ruling class can can maybe uh propose um you know solutions that might fix this or that or or the other thing um and and that's how people are like oh I like that idea I'll get I'll get involved in the in the process but the capitalist class as a whole uh, can't solve the problems that the capitalist class creates right that their system creates because they are the problem um, their incessant need for for uh, expanding profit um, uh, at an exponential rate um, that that profit has to come from somewhere. Um, so again, the, the process of, of uh, impoverishing the working classes, the working class and, and uh, shrinking the middle classes um, is, is continuing unabated. Um, but the ruling class do see a problem with this. Um, they are actually afraid. Uh, they are paranoid. Um, uh, and it's not, and and they're looking for for answers. It's not just uh, the the massive uh, expenditures on on police and the military. Um, they don't even think that's enough to protect them. They um, they this is the, also the reason why they're fine with uh, with uh, far right militias, um, with guns being flooded into uh, into the country at every level. They build bunkers. They buy boats. They buy buy uh, houses in different countries because they actually are are afraid of the country that they're uh, creating. Um, so the the process is uh, uh, can't continue as it is, um, and a few in the ruling class have have recognized this, um, and uh, they want to get workers on their side, right? Well, Democrats have some workers allied with them. We want some workers allied with us, um, but the question is how. Um, and now this has been a project of. Uh, the, the the ruling class of, of the Republicans and the Democrats, um, uh, but the process has has been destabilized as the Democrats moved to the right and tried to get billionaires and technocrats and and Silicon Valley uh, uh, donors on their side. They've alienated more layers of of workers, um, and that's left space open to to their left, um, or at least a space to be to be filled. Um, but the, this has been a project of, uh, on long term. In fact, ruling class parties have to do this. They they can't in in bourgeois democracy. They have to get workers on their side somehow. Um, the Republicans and the right have have done this on the back burner with things like uh, uh, evangelical churches, um, as well as uh, increased uh, expenditures on cops, the military, 
since the 90s, uh, uh, the INS and ICE, um, there's always the uh, the fallback of, of construction projects. Um, uh, so, but it's become more deliberate in the last few years uh, under Trump. Um, and I, I am going kind of quick, so I'm just trying to get a get a big picture here. Um, it has been more deliberate with Trump. Trump has literally articulated that he wants to turn the Republican Party into a working class party. Obviously, he doesn't mean in the sense that we think of a, a working class party, um, but he he wants to take it out of the country clubs of George Bush um, and make it into to something else. Um, there's a, a this is a, a, a concrete project. There's a, a a magazine called Compact Magazine, um, which is pushing the idea of conservative unionism. Um, interestingly, it has some DSA types um, uh, that are also contributing to the project. Um, so you see how uh, reformism leads back into uh, the state. Um, and what is conservative unionism? Well, it means racist unionism, sexist unionism, um, fascist unionism, if, if you want to uh, go that far. But it's about splitting the demographics. Um, and uh, all right, I'm running out of time. Um, <laughs> uh, I was going to go into some of the, the Teamster stuff. Uh, the Teamsters are a key part of this uh strategy um uh and and um if you paid attention to sean o'brien's uh speech to the leader of the teamsters um at the rnc he called out very specific people like josh holly those who those are contributors to compact magazine so this is a this is a project of the right um a project of the ruling class to um to shake things up um and the the process by which this happened in the teams is, is interesting because there was a problem um, of, of Hoffa, Hoffa Jr. Um, in, in years past, um, and he flirted with the right uh, in lots of ways. Sean O'Brien came on, allied with the TD reformers. I'm just trying to finish up quick here. Um, and he criticized Hoffa for his his uh, uh, playing footsie with Trump, as he uh, as he put it. Um uh, he had good critiques of Trump when he was running for IBT president, um, and also of Democrats. So, a few fast forward a few years, he's now speaking at the RNC, seeming pocket endorsing Trump, calling him a tough SOB, uh, saying he has courage and things like that. What happened? How did he go from criticizing Trump to being kind of an ally uh, of them. And I think this is where it's important for us to realize our importance. There are no radical and revolutionary groups. The one uh, reform group in, in the Teamsters, TDU, has tied itself hand and foot to Sean O'Brien. They will not criticize him. Um, uh, they have activists uh, um, uh, and leaders who are members as part of his uh, administration. They will not criticize him at all. So there's no one of any size pushing uh, from the left. So while it might be uh, uh, easy to say, well, this was a, this was just a plan of O'Brien's all along. He was, after all, a, 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 if not a racist and sexist himself, a, an apologist for racism and sexism in his local before he became IBT president, um, that he was just pulling the wool over our eyes. I think the, the real issue is that he he saw some openings um, uh, to the left, had some critiques that seemed to make sense that got him the votes. But then the, what to do about this problem with Democrats, problem with Republicans? So now the 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 uh, the strategy seems to be well, let's play them off against each other, and that's that's specifically Sean O'Brien's. Uh, strategy um when when you ask people close to him but we'll play we'll, we won't endorse either we'll play uh each off each other um and uh and then we'll get ahead that way unfortunately that's not a new strategy uh that is and in fact a much older strategy the for the past 80 years or so 90 years the strategy of the u.s labor movement has been to ally with one of the two capitalist parties the democrats and push that way um, the strategy of trying to play them off each other was the previous strategy. 
and that was that worked even less well. Um, all it led to was uh, split demographics, um, different sections of the working class allying with different parties, and literal uh, bloodbaths between uh, different sections of the working class. Um, uh, so this is not a step forward for the labor movement, but a, but a major, major step backwards. It also speaks to our importance. Revolutionaries, radicals have to be organized. We have to get into the unions um, and and make our uh, politics known. We have to push uh, from a rank and file perspective um, uh, to to force the the bureaucracy to act uh, in in even a, a moderately progressive fashion. Um, so everybody here on this this uh, in, in this meeting needs to see their own importance in this process. Um, and now there is a question of of what socialists sometimes call industrialization. It doesn't mean the the, the old process of of uh, uh, you know the industrial revolution, but it meant the process of taking of recruiting uh, revolutionaries from from college campuses and things like that, and then sending them into the heavy industry. Uh, with union representation, and it was a disaster in lots of ways in the the seventies and sixties, uh, seventies, and eighties, and, and the ISO rightly criticized that. However, I think we need to think about it also, um, because uh, back in the day, um, it meant that uh, revolutionaries also resented being sent to to work in these dirty industries when they could have been making much more money uh using their degrees and, and middle class jobs that's no longer the case necessarily um i may i have my master's degree in, in education i make twice uh delivering boxes what i made as a teacher um that's part of the process of of the immiseration of the working class and the, the shrinking of the middle classes um i'm not saying everybody needs to go find a union union job because Unions also have their own problems of, of bureaucratism and um, and things like that. And there are plenty of opportunities where we're going to be creating unions out of whole cloth, like the Starbucks workers union and, and, and things we can't even predict. Um, everybody in, in this meeting has a role or should see themselves as having a role to play in the uprisings that are to come. <laughs>